Now, the political fever is going a notch higher. The Nairobi gubernatorial seat is fast racing, uh, shaping up. But what is the state of affairs of Nairobi? This is going to constitute part of our discussion this morning on Morning Express. I'm your host, Michael Gitonga, and welcome to the broadcast from wherever you are tuning in from. And being the last Tuesday of 2020, we have our regular Your Money segment coming up. Our focus is going to be around the year's resolutions and drawing up that perfect saving plan that can start your year off. Tweet us and share your feedback via our Twitter handles, KTA News KE, or you can tweet me directly, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga. Let's start the show with a quick look at our press review, and we're going to start off with the international papers looking at what's making headlines internationally we start with the citizen where doctors won of <clears throat> super gonorrhea now this is uh, coming up from who and they are warning that there could be super gonorrhea what is being called a super gonorrhea and uh, it is detailing that there may be a result of well it may be as a result of the pandemic the coronavirus that is uh, hitting the globe so doctors warning of super gonorrhea let's go to the daily monitor where politics has been uh, heating up uh, by the day and Ugandan journalists paying the price of police brutality against campaigning politicians. We do know quite a number of journalists have been arrested and uh, Uganda basically going to the streets to say that their journalists need to be uh, you know, released. And not just Uganda, actually the whole of East Africa and world over. We've had quite a number of uh, Twitter hashtags that have been trending with uh, those people being asked to, well, with the Ugandan authorities uh, being asked to literally uh, stop impunity and let the journalists go. Let's go to the East African where we have COVID-19 cases in Kenya rise to 95,992. That's 95,992. We do know that uh, there has been a, uh, a slight decline in uh, the percentage uh, in terms of numbers, but that does not mean we are out of the woods. It certainly is still time for us to be very cautious and very careful. The Reuters where we have Biden, Trump aid setting roadblocks for his transition team. And, uh, well, that, of course, is as we get closer and closer uh, to the handing over of the reins in January from Donald Trump to Joe Biden. Let's look at the final paper here, which is a CNN. And we have how the pandemic brought a rising tide of hunger to Europe with homeless people not having anywhere to go and no food to eat, but government has stepped in to try and see whether they can have what in America they call soup kitchens where they literally just distribute food stuff and also provide um, temporary accommodation for those who may not have. So how the pandemic brought a rising tide of hunger to Europe is what is making headlines on the CNN right there. But we're going to change focus now and look at what's making headlines on our dailies right here uh, back home. And to have that conversation, I'm joined in studio by the Member of Parliament for Embakasi North, and that's none other than Honorable James Gakuya. Thank you for joining us bright and early, sir. Thank you. All right, and we go straight into the dailies, and we start off, as usual, with the standard, where we have the headline, How Raila Rattled Year 2020. And this, of course, is just giving the timelines and a framework of what's been happening, politically speaking, in the country. And the prime mover here being the, prime, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga from pushing the BBI agenda to offering sense of security to President Kenyatta to purge Jubilee House. ODM leader Raila Odinga Dinga moves uh, defined the politics of the year 2020. He's promising to do so in 2021. Honorable Gakuya, do you agree that Raila Odinga literally defined how politics ran in 2020? Uh, of course, uh, 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 Kenya, as any other country, is driven by what we call uh, political drive. And uh, we have seen uh, Raira as one of the most energized uh, politicians. Uh, and uh, I cannot ignore that actually he has called a lot of shots, and especially in the year 2020, mm -hmm. because surely he has made sure that actually uh, the reggae has to continue. Right. And actually he was, in the, he, he, he was in the record saying nobody can stop reggae, and it's very true that reggae is still on mm -hmm. at, as, at, at, as, of, as of at this point. 
uh, we are now looking, uh, we are already past signatures, and we are expecting that, in fact, any time the draft will be taken to, uh, the verification will be done, and the, 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 the bill will be taken to the counties right. for, for either approval or disapproval. Okay, so, so I can, I can, I, I, I can, I, I, I can, um, uh, you would agree with that? I can agree with that, that at least he has called a lot of shots in this particular, including uh, bringing, bringing down the, the, the Tower of Jubilee mm -hmm. part. And, and <laughs> when you say he brought down the Tower of Jubilee, what do you mean? Because according uh, to this article, he uh, was also offering solutions for Jubilee since Jubilee seemed to have been a very divided house. Uh, in fact, I can tell you that, in fact, uh, if there is uh, injury, the injury is after hardship. Is in, uh, the losers are the jubilee. It's the jubilee party. Why so? Because as we start today, mm -hmm. jubilee is totally divided and is split into two. The head of state is in, in his own camp and his deputy is in, on, a, on a his de different camp. And this tells you clearly that, in fact, what we are, we are looking for now, what we are seeing currently, is that we are seeing a divided Jubilee party. Mm -hmm. yes. So the leader has made it clear that, uh, has made it, made it clear that actually he, he, his, his stake has taken a, a control even to the, to the, uh, to the, to the, to the ongoing of the Jubilee party. All right. And according to this article, it also says that he is likely to define what's going to be happening in 2021, especially given that, uh, you know, reggae, or as you call it, or the referendum is likely to be one of the main features that is going to kick off next year. Do you agree? Uh, in fact, now that, in fact, the, the, the process of the BBI is, has a roadmap, and the roadmap is probably to make it a uh, referendum by August. It tells you that he was still in the control until when that particular leg is at the final gear. And uh, uh, until when the, that particular BBI process is at the end and concluded, later cannot sleep. And therefore, he still call short, because it would, the outcome of the BBI will determine whether the Kenya will go to new chapter mm -hmm. of new uh, uh, kind of structure of leadership or whether it will remain to the current. So therefore, I would say, in case he maneuvers to sail through the BBI, he still be having, uh, calling another shot. Okay, you still think that the BBI is in question as to whether it will go through or not? Do you think that uh, there's a chance that it may not go through? Uh, in fact, they are like, uh, they are, I would say that they are, there is a likelihood that Jubilee, uh, what we call BBI may not sail through. Because this will be left to, the, uh, to what we call to the voice of Kenyans. And at the end of the day, Kenyans will decide whether to go for BBI or not. As we speak, we are still divided as a nation. There are those who are pro and those who are against. And therefore, at the end of the day, the referendum itself will call a shot when to bring a question of no and yes. And then whoever will carry the day will give us the direction. So All right. Therefore, I am sure that it is still a divided case. All right. And uh, that's the headline there, how Raila rattled the year 2020. And according to this article, he is likely to be a main feature, politically speaking, when it comes to 2021. But that, let's now look at a different headline. And I'd like to combine two. The headline for the Daily Nation is schools push for learning in shifts. There's also an article here on page two of the Standard where Ministry to release 19 billion to schools before opening date. Uh, but let me get your thoughts on this, Mweshimiwa, especially being a member of parliament what you think and uh, maybe you've done rounds in your constituents to see whether the schools are ready now schools are pushing for starting in shifts as opposed to starting together and this is purely because of the infrastructure and the fact that classes cannot handle huge numbers yet they're supposed to be social distancing uh, one is that in like a case in my constituency has just made an estimate on how every other school must at least have not less than 10 number of uh, canvas which will assist to, uh, to accommodate those, the, the congestion of those classes. If, if we are going to go by the conditionalities of social distance, mm -hmm. if that would be the case, and there is no shortcut because we cannot allow our <coughs> students to learn in that congested manner, where we are very sure that that will take them to a very serious risk. Therefore, there is a serious need for makeshift or carnivals kind of classrooms. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that the Magoha was assured Kenyans that 500,000 desks are already available in schools and more are coming. And therefore, those makeshift, as long as a student have somewhere to sit on, 
he can be able to uh, take to take the question is learning. whether there is even space because some of the classrooms of course are made uh, pretty small and uh, according to this article they say that it you know it would be holding around uh, 50, uh, 50, 93 students per class which of course would be very uh, close knit now if you talk about temporary structures do we have space in schools i, I can say for a, for a while people may uh, may tend to use the playgrounds as part of this uh, the congestion for temporarily because also there is no way that you cannot have schools without playgrounds mm -hmm. of course that's an exercise that cannot be left uh, can, can, students cannot can, can do without and therefore for uh, temporarily before because i'm saying temporarily that because surely we are not aware when this pandemic will be able to move out of most of us but mm -hmm. i am sure if this country is want us to move to the right direction mm -hmm. we must make sure that the issue to do with the what we call vaccine is given a priority and uh, and fast tracking so that at least if it is to immunize our children and, uh, and teachers then we get out of this particular fear mm -hmm. because we cannot permanently be in this particular fear and we cannot purport to have what we call temporary or shifts forever. Therefore, and we don't know when this particular pandemic is coming to an end. Therefore, we must focus and make sure that we prioritize uh, what we call number enough for vaccine mm. so that we can vaccinate our students and our teachers and that fear can, be, can come to the end. But I'm sure that they'll be having a lot of chaos in opening or forth because no, those preparations are not yet. Those shifts are not yet made. Right. And, and let me tell you, the other worst thing is that how, how will we be treating the, the students when we have not yet started to craft those, those, those makeshifts? And mm. we have only five days to opening of those, these particular schools. I am sure that there will be a lot of crash, considering that there is private schools that will not be able to accommodate the, 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 the runners any longer. Right. And, the, and the government has agreed that the, 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 private, the public schools will adopt all those students mm. and condition and therefore, we are going to have a lot of crash, and uh, we are asking the government to put, to to, uh, to rush in speed, speed to make sure that those makeshifts or those alternative structures are made with uh, with immediate effect, Absolutely. so that at least we can get out of that risky. All right, and yeah. uh, looking at even another article uh, in regards to schools, there were complaints of how students, uh, when they were last in school t towards the beginning of the year were registering and parents had to spend literally a whole day filling in forms and getting their, their children to register for school. So one wonders if that's going to be any different, high social distancing going to be established for boarding schools. There is also the question of whether they have expanded their sleeping areas, their dormitories and their bed capacity. We've seen schools that even have three layered uh, or three story, uh, you, uh, you know, what are they called? Uh, double deckers, a uh, triple decker us if you like and as a result question is have those been handled Mweshimiwa, do you feel that we are ready for children to go back to school as much as we cannot wait forever for the pandemic to end because we don't know when it's gonna end do you feel that we are ready to have children go back to school I would say the students are ready to get back to school but the, the government was not ready to take, to, uh, to, uh, take, the, to take back the schools because what it starts is the budgeting mm. and for the during when the, the government uh, came to a point of uh, making a date of uh, reopening of the schools, mm -hmm. what they could have to make first is the budget to make those makeshifts, budget, budget to make preparation for everything that was supposed to be part of the, the uh, opening of the school. Mm -hmm. But we find that teachers are back to school, but they are saying that they cannot be able to, uh, they are not ready to open. Even you can see the government is trying to release money too late, this 19 million, when it is too late, the, the, this money period is not money for development. This is, I believe this is a money which at least care for, for, the, for, 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 for the normal welfare of the student in school. And uh, this tells you that actually there was a laxity in the Ministry for Education and now the Treasury, because the Ministry of Education cannot do much if the exchequer is not raising money. Right. And that particular laxity is taking us to address this, our problem at the last minute, which is too bad that actually we, are, we want to clobber everything at this particular point of opening school mm. when we are not yet prepared anything. 
All right, and uh, well, we'll wait and see how that's going to pan out. We do know that uh, parents have a huge task of getting their children back to school, not to mention that there's school fees to be paid and also school uniforms that they probably need to get, especially given that children have been home now for close to a year and may require a different uniform to get back to school. One wonders whether there's going to be any uh, subsidizing of some of those costs by the government. There's also the question of some private schools that have been closed because of the pandemic and as a result we are likely to see an upsurge or a huge number go to the uh, public schools. So let's wait and see how that's going to go. But also there's an article on the front page of the standard. Here comes Wilbarrow Political party. Mwishimiwa, just yes. to get your thoughts on this, could this be William Ruto's new outfit? Uh, one I cannot decide for him. Uh, but wherever you just, see... Just getting your thoughts on whether yeah, you well, think well, maybe well, this but, is but, uh, but his new political outfit. In fact, the symbol of the, uh, the, symbol wheelbarrow. Of the wheelbarrow actually is, a nation, uh, is what we call a, uh, a hustle nation symbol. And therefore, uh, I, I cannot distance the deputy president totally out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that actually there are what to call uh, legalities because currently one has to cross to another party uh, when, he, when he decides to sign. Mm -hmm. uh, but before a designation, I am sure that he cannot debate in public that he, that is his party. But I am sure mm -hmm. that is a vessel that he has. Uh, I am sure that he must be part of the vessel uh, to prepare his uh, journey to 2022. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I have no doubt when I have seen that symbol of uh, Fulboro, I am totally identifying that particular party to the deputy president. All right. And uh, at this particular point, it is very true that actually the pressure has been too much, and it is likely, it, it has been so likely that he could not even get a chance to contend in the Jubilee party, since it's like Jubilee party has its owners. As its owners, yes. and uh, it looks like he's not one of them. He is he the is deputy not. party yeah. leader, though. Uh, why would he not be part of the owners? Uh, one thing is that, in fact, uh, we need to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to know that actually we don't live in the sky, we live here. And we have seen, even to the last concluding support election, we have witnessed the uh, deputy president with his team at Jubilee. Uh, headquarters, and we, we actually we waited as what rude statements were made, even at a point where he was asked not to make, be not making public, uh, public release, uh, uh, press releases in that particular uh, headquarters. Then it tells you that he's not welcome any longer there. Mm. He may be pushing himself there, but the, 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 what we call body language is totally completely locking out. All right, and out. 2020 has certainly been a very difficult year for the deputy president as deputy party leader, with obvious signs that they're not reading from the same script with the president. What is your prediction for next year? Do you think that they will still continue as, uh, you know, party leader and deputy party leader, or is a breakup imminent? Uh, in this particular case, what I am sure is that the deputy president will start relinquishing throwing himself from the issues to do with the pub, uh, uh, what we call political party, the Jubilee political party. But in terms of the government, since the head of state is the, is the president, the deputy president is the deputy president, I am sure in that particular line of the leadership, that one, there will be no issue. But in the issues to do with the political party, I am sure the deputy president will start distancing himself slowly and making up his uh, inroad of his new bus. Mm. Yes. All right. And uh, another article that, uh, of course, has made the headlines of front page of both pages is Battle Royale for the Soul of Nairobi. And on the standard, it's Battle Royale for the Soul of Nairobi. On the nation, it's Race to Replace Sonko at City Hall Shapes Up. And this, of course, is giving names of those who have uh, shown interest in the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. Before we get even into the nitty-gritties of what Nairobi requires, because we'll do that later, what are your thoughts on some of those who have given or shown interest the likes of Ferdinand Waitito, who was governor for Kiambu County, he was impeached, yet has the audacity to throw in his uh, uh, request for him to be Nairobi's governor. Your thoughts on that, Boishimiwa? I am sure that, in fact, uh, Governor Ferdinand Waitito is not totally serious about his contention to Nairobi gubernatorial list, and he's very sure that he cannot win the list. But he wants to, want to remain politically relevant. And uh, what he's trying to, what he's trying to do for now is preparing himself to uh, draw himself to, to uh, migrate from totally Kiabu politics 
to back to Nairobi politics. And this tells you he's riding an entry point back to Nairobi politics. And uh, being a contender in this by-election, it will just give him, give, give him a clear roadmap in his 2022 preparation for governorial. But for this one, I'm sure he just wants to have what we call, or to get what we call political, uh, 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 political relevance. relevancy. Okay, but doesn't that, what does that say about the Kenyan voter in terms of how the politicians view the Kenyan voter? This is somebody who was, uh, you know, MP for Embakasi at one point, then he moves on to Kiambu, he becomes governor, he is impeached, yet he still wants to remain politically relevant. What does that say of what politicians think of the Kenyan voter? Uh, this is one to say that uh, the decision to either retain or fire a politician resorts to what we call the, the voter. And therefore, the voter has every, every, every power, every power and means to decide where he wants to take his de destiny. And in this particular case, I cannot say that there is any single politician who cannot throw himself to any contention mm -hmm. as long as he complies with the law. And after that, it is now the prerogative of Wanjiko to decide who is to take the mantle to lead him mm. going forward. I am sure Nairobians are very sure about the habit and behavior of, 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 of Waititu, and therefore it's up to them to decide whether he's the best to, uh, to, to, to recoup back to uh, city's politics. And but to me, I would say it is the, uh, the ball, the ball uh, uh, stops at Wanjiko. Mm. So it's a, the borrow, it's at Wanjiko. Wanjiko, you have various number. You have what you call a variety of, of, of politicians there. And it's up to you to decide where you want to take the destiny of the city. And that's what is democracy is all about. It is really well, well. down to Wanjiko to decide. But the other thing that this highlights is political parties. When I look at some of the contenders, and I'll just read through them, uh, we have the likes of ODM, who has uh, Sami Wakiaga and Beth Siengo. We have Miguna Miguna, who is uh, now on a third way alliance ticket. What does this tell us about our political parties? We do know that uh, Miguna Miguna, for example, is one who has uh, dished, dished all the parties that he has been in, but now for convenience he's in Third Way Alliance. Uh, but that tells us something about the constitution of our political parties and the fact that they do not necessarily um, take up candidates based on their agenda or what they have in store for Kenyans. Uh, this tells you that our political parties has a weakness because what it does, they always look for somebody who has already made some name, and that is that is their back, who has a background, who can be able to boost the party, and therefore the, that alliance uh, bringing Miguna in this particular saga, they are just trying to create the image of the party or the relevance of the party because when Miguna name is being is, uh, is, is being uh, talked about, then that alliance appears, and, but it's not, they are not necessarily there for the candidate to win the election, mm. but just candidates to make the parties relevant. Because I'm sure even that alliance, they are very sure, Miguna cannot ca capture the, the seat of the city. All right, and uh, well, that's basically what we are going to be focusing on. We are going to take a short break, uh, but we're going to be focusing on that Nairobi County. And later on, we're also going to be talking to uh, Philip Kisia, who's a former town clerk of Nairobi County, and just indulging him on possibly what Nairobi County requires and needs in terms of leadership. And uh, that's going to be part of what we're going to be discussing. Feel free to engage and let us know what your thoughts are on that. The hashtag is uh, Kate. Uh, good morning Express, and we'll be glad to hear from you. You can also tweet, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga or at KTN News KE. We'll be glad to hear what your take is on that. For now, we're going to take a short break, but do stay with us. We'll be right back.